tell me the story of, yeah. of the spring of 63. Mm. You're, you're, you're just 12 and a half years old. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. all of this just torrent of mm -hmm. protest was unfolded sure. in a couple of months there sure. in May. And sure, how did, sure. How did, that, how did that history find you there in the city in, in those months? I think I told you we were always in church. <laughs> And I, I, I make students laugh sometimes because I say, I am not going to paint that as a picture where we were so happy to be there all the time. And I did not want to go listen to these different people from outside talk. I mean, and I'm sitting in the back of the room, and the way my parents could placate me was to let me just read my book or do my math. I love math. And so I'd sit in the back of the church because you had to be there, and I'd listen to a bit. Of it. And I, you learned to sing the songs, and the songs were good. But amazingly, when I heard this man say that what – he was proposing, and that is involving children in the march, could lead to children being able to go to, any, to the best schools in our city. Now that got my attention, because I wanted to see just how smart these white kids were. <laughs> I didn't think anybody was smarter than I was. And to me, though, smart was not about what you're born with. Smart had to do with how hard you were willing to work. My parents had to sometimes punish me for not going to sleep. I mean, I just wanted to keep working, and they were worried that I was working too hard. So, and to me, that was smart. When you work really hard and you achieve a lot and you, you make A's not because you want the grades, but because you want to, you dare to know, all right? And, uh, but when he said that, I said, now, that's worth listening to. Remember who that was? And I said, what's the guy's name? What's this, what's this minister's name? And he said, King. It was my first time, I'll never forget. I said, King, what a name, King. No, Reverend King, Reverend Martin Luther King. It was very, very it was amazing. And, uh, and then I began to listen to him and others, and I realized how well-spoken they were. Now, as it turns out, my pastor was also very polished as a speaker. He read a lot. We read books together. So we were accustomed to polished speakers, but this man was talking about... Um, the next level, what it would take to change things. Because what, what we don't remember is that while we knew things were not fair, we tended to think this is the way of the world. I suppose it's the way my descendants felt in slavery. It just is this way. It's awful, but this is the way of the world. And before that King message, that message from Dr. King, the thought was, since this is the way of the world, you've got to be really good to get a chance at all. He was changing the model, the vision, and saying it doesn't have to be this way, that we could be empowered to change it. Very different message. And did I believe him? I wanted to.